Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, we stopped at the Demon Bell last time. And the Demon Bell... I thought about it. I'm not gonna ring it for this LP playthrough. Maybe for a future stream. Uh, so remember how Dark Souls 2 had the Company of Champions covenant to make the game harder? The Demon Bell is just that for Sekiro. Um, by the way, this is... A path between the Ashina outskirts and uh, Sempo Temple. We could have gone here much earlier in the game. We are going to come out to the Sunken Valley. And that's really all there is here. Plus, there's a headless in here. We're on that in a second. Uh, so, what ringing the bell does specifically is it makes enemies do more damage to your posture and your health. And it gives them more health and posture. It also makes them drop more enemies. More enemies? More items. More frequently. You can remove the, the effect of ringing the bell at will, though. In case you regret your decision. Uh, there's also a New Game Plus item called Kuro's Charm, which you can turn into Kuro at the beginning of New Game Plus to make the game harder. Mainly, it causes you to take ship damage on block if you don't perfect parry things. So with that out of the way, we are going to pick up where we actually left off before making that detour up to, I believe it was a pinwheel up there, and the demon bell. So just have to get past a couple of the Sempo assassins again. Nope, don't want to drop on him. This one, though, we will happily plunge on to. This might be a little bit perilous because if they throw shuriken or kunai or whatever it is they're throwing like I just saw near my feet it would have knocked me off but now we're okay we can continue we can continue back onto this path we're gonna see how much Sempo actually branches also this area is nice and pretty right almost autumnal this is something that's so brilliant <laughs> A small pinwheel made of red and white paper found about halfway up Mount Congo. The red and white pinwheels simply spin round and round. Everyone is right here, as opposed to the child. So you find a few Jizo statues that you can pick up throughout the game, so you definitely have the chance to get that item description before coming here. Oh, we're gonna have to pick that back up because we have the Armored Warrior. We're trying to position him in a really specific way. If you recall, we got an item called Robert's Firecrackers earlier on in the game, and it led to the uh, Firecracker prosthetic tool. And it said something about they journeyed to Japan to seek immortality to extend Robert's life. I didn't quite push him off. So as you can see, my swings do zero damage to him, but his posture is pretty low. Uh, and even that death blow didn't do anything. It just knocked him back. So the goal of this fight is not to kill him with your sword. It's to kill him with gravity, much like the Iron Golem. Robert. That is Robert's dad. This armored warrior here in a place where monks are seeking immortality. He's seeking it for his son. There's even a prayer bead later on that mentions uh, his father. Sorry, a prayer necklace. Um, his his father is being some super resilient war voila, warrior fighting for the sake of his son. Oh, and while I'm on this subject, I got several really good responses to my question about the five statues when we started Senpo. There were theories about them representing four Divine Guardians plus an Ashura. One of them being uh, about 
The statues representing five wise kings who represented wrathful Buddha incarnations. And then the one that uh, I somehow missed, which is that they were figures whom the sugars are named for. Uh, and then when I thought about it more, I realized not only are they who the sugars are named for, those are also the five headless we see in the game. Uh, it'll become even more apparent why once we finally kill one. And yeah, there are five headless in the game. You can also see them in the item. A holy book on enlightenment inscribed for the divine child of rejuvenation. For an age I have been blessed by the worm. To be undying is to walk the eternal path to enlightenment. Thus I must become enlightened to understand why I cannot die. It is said the holy dragon's origins were in the west. So I wonder how did the worm come to be bestowed upon me? So one, the worm. It's called, uh, two, it's called the holy text infestation. And three, the divine child of rejuvenation. Remember, remember that uh, white pinwheel description? Only the child is here. So this ties back into something that we'll get back to just a mo in a moment. I was going somewhere with this talk about the sugars. Oh, the actual pictures. You can see they're identical to the statues that we looked at for the uh, sugar descriptions. And it also makes sense because all of the sugar descriptions say that they were made in Senpo. So it ties all back together. Now, as for the Jizo statues and the pinwheels... So we've definitely had a chance to read the description of the Jizo statues, the bundled ones, up to this point. And then you come here... And you see these areas where there are just Jizo statues littering the floor. None of them can be picked up, but you know what they are by then. You might just not be thinking about it. But once you do, once you just take a second and consider what they are, this otherwise beautiful area takes such a turn from beauty to jaw-dropping terror. The moment you realize that your stomach drops. Uh, the key line from the Jesus statue description that I'm talking about is uh, the thing about them expressing parental love and then uh, the bundle of cloth being to ensure that the little ones move on in peace. Even here, look at them all. Pinwheels and Jesus statues. There are hundreds, if not thousands around here. It's such a subtle way of imbuing terror into this level. It's really perfect environmental storytelling. Like, for as clumsy as all of the exposition dump following Genichiro was, this... Mmm. Marvelous. And then we'll learn the how and the why, and it gets so, so much worse. Uh, and I'll give you a hint, the holy text infested, and the pinwheels, they're all connected to that. To why there are so many statues dedicated to dead kids. The white pinwheel, only the child is here. Maybe that divine child of rejuvenation? Red and white being everyone else. Maybe all of the children who didn't make it, who didn't become divine children. And then, hmm, the rest of it begs the question of, what infestation? Why was there an infestation? Maybe it was the worm that was mentioned in the text? Like, for instance, were they infesting children with some kind of worm to create a divine child much like uh, the divine heir of the dragon's heritage which you could interpret to be a kind of worm 
as we go in further to Sempo Temple in Mount Congo, we'll get those answers. I really wish... Oh, damn, this sucks. Uh, this Sempo Assassin has created all the problems in the world by just not coming forward and throwing things at me from afar because it's aggroed like five monks. Alright, well, we're fighting them like this, then. Ah, shit. First you. You, 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 you die. Damn it. Come on, please let me finish him. Stay mobile. And we'll be good. That's like one of the, the biggest things about crowd control. Stay mobile. Uh, abuse your iframes. And hit and run. And also, like you take no chip damage, so you'll be good. At least on new game if you're not doing um, a charmless run. You are the last one. Oh, yeah. And the animation transitions are so smooth in this. Like, he doesn't just teleport back up into a standing state. No, 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 no. You get a different death blow animation if he's on the ground. And hello! So I think this speaks for itself, huh? The worm, the infestation. Oh, and this heals them up. Uh, these are also kind of hard to fight. We're just gonna have to avoid that at all costs. I read about these kind of monks uh, from a Reddit post, by the way. These monks. We've seen one like it. It didn't have the centipede infesting it. But we've seen these uh, sitting white cloth monks before. These can't die. They have, to some extent, achieved immortality. It's not a great form of immortality since they seem to be animated by these horrendous giant centipedes. But hey, they've done something, I guess. We're going to take this before it gets real bad up in here. Okay. And now things are making more sense, huh? You can hear him squirming, getting back up. Fuck that noise. Might be able to kill them later. We'll see. Just a little maybe. And then we still have stuff to deal with out here. Uh, so anyway... They are, uh, Buddhist monks who would desiccate their insides eating, like, pine needles... ...and then starve themselves to self-mummify. Uh, I don't know which side... They're always getting in behind me. So now we're kind of learning a little bit more about what this worm and what this infestation might be. It's a goddamn centipede infestation. But a divine centipede infestation. Uh, so there are some implications here that are some of my favorite things in the game because they're seeking immortality. Specifically, whoever wrote that text spells this out pretty plainly. They're seeking immortality so they can have unlimited time on Earth to reach enlightenment. You know, escaping the karmic cycle of reincarnation and becoming one with the, the greater cosmos. But because they're so attached to this idea, something that is like diametrically opposed to the fundamental beliefs of Buddhism, they're never going to achieve that enlightenment. They essentially make the mistake of condemning themselves to a sort of eternal karmic purgatory. So the Sempo, their pursuit of immortality, and this new factor of the centipede infestation adds a brand new dimension to pretty much everything. We've gathered the core theme of the game is immortality, 
uh, and the perils of pursuing everlasting life, and that the subtext is very much about how a good thing can't last forever. This idea of stagnation. But now we're starting to explore different angles within the text. Uh, in Ashna, immortality is looked upon very differently. Ishi in Ashina is not happy to see others looking to become immortal, and Koro sees the problem too, which is why he wants to sever his own divine immortality and his connection to that, which he inherited by blood, apparently. But we also know that there are uh, there are those in Ashina who are pursuing it, even against the wishes of Ishin, like Genichiro, and it's taken a a hell of a toll on him, whatever route he has gone down in pursuing it. Also, a whole lot of bodies here. Uh, it's a very different type of immortality, though, isn't it? Or at least a different path he, he walked to get there. There's the dragon's heritage, and all of these ties to snakes and dragons... And, you know, Koro can give his blessing to, say, the wolf. But it seems to take a toll. We're going to have to do a whole lot more dying soon so I can talk more about the toll that it actually takes. Because there's a whole mechanic that we haven't fully explored that will make this make more sense called Dragon Rot. Um, but for now, there are consequences to this immortality. There's a, a toll to be paid. And regardless, those in Ashina are pursuing this. Now, the Senpo, we know they're reviled uh, by the wider Ashina clan. The, the, um, the practitioners at Senpo Temple. Where did even these all come from? They're reviled by the greater Ashina clan. And we now know that their approach to trying to become immortal is ghastly. Because they're implanting these centipedes in people. These very abnormal centipedes. So remember in Neo, we got to talk briefly about the Omakata? the huge mountain-sized centipedes from Japanese folklore. What's well, actually much more significant significant here than uh than you might think. Because mm, hold on. Just like how the Ashina rival uh Senpo, the Omakade centipedes were rivals of the dragons in folklore. And there are some really significant connections that we'll explore even further down the line. But we're just getting our hints of that now. It's what makes Mount Congo one of my favorite levels. Among so many other things, the storytelling with all the Jizo statues, you see more of them and more pinwheels here. Also, how do you like that for a twist? We know Miyazaki loves playing with recurring motifs between his games, and here, instead of immortality being a curse that afflicts you from the get-go, it's something that is itself accursed, but people are seeking it out in kind of a foolhardy gambit. Oh, man. Senpo and, and Mount Congo are, ri are where a lot of themes and storytelling elements of this game and narrative hooks really start to come into into their own. Plus, it's where a lot of things kick up. It's where like a lot of level design elements kick up. It's where they start to introduce a lot more challenge, a lot more branching pathways into levels themselves. It's one of the most beautiful levels visually, and then there's the environmental storytelling. There's just a lot going on, and look at this boy! So now we have an understanding that these uh, smaller Wolverine-esque enemies are called long arms or long arm centipedes or just centipedes. And this is a chief among them. Long arm centipede Sanun. 
He's also a real big pushover. Uh, because you do the most posture damage when you are deflecting consecutive attacks, and he just wails on you. And that makes it really easy to get, like, tons of perfect deflects in a row. And then he often goes for that sweep, so you can do extra posture damage on top of that. Really easy fight. This is also home to, to a few of my favorite boss fights. Oh no, I, I'm sorry, uh, one of them is not here. One of them is. There's a good gimmick fight here. Which we're not that far away from, to be honest. We will get to it at about this episode or the end of the episode. It's pretty close. And then another one which we'll have access to pretty soon. And we're also going to start getting our explanations for what exactly the fuck uh, the Senpo monks were doing. And if the environment isn't already enough of a clue, what they were doing is pretty heinous. First, Shield Boy. And these guys we've seen lobbing what appear to be like psychically controlled bombs at us. I think we can plunge another one from here. Because he thankfully didn't notice us. Cool. And then we have the hardest part of Sempo Temple coming up soon. The hardest part of Mount Congo, rather. Always use those interchangeably. Oh, the elevation! He did his little twirly kick right over us. Cool. And now the really tricky part. There's not one, not two but three of those twin blade enemies. Two of them are standing back to back. I sometimes have some luck with pulling them with shurikens and just getting one at a time, which would be ideal. We could also just throw open the door and ignore them. But I want to see. I think we got two. Oh, we definitely got two. We're just lucky to have knocked on all three. Oh, fuck. Oh. Yeah, that's how quickly two-on-one with them can kill you. So, plan B. Let's try to separate them a little bit. Come on. Round this corner. Come on. Okay, so they don't have a hard leash around the corner. That's good. I want you to twirl at me. Spinning. Always spinning towards freedom. I don't care which of them comes at me. I just want one of them. You can never really keep them trapped in the corner either. Don't retreat. Don't back up. Yes, good. Good job. Oh, fuck. I can't afford to be impatient either. Because <laughs> they already took out one of my resurrections. And even at a distance, you have to worry about the other one if he's around the corner in line of sight of you. Yeah. Okay, good. The stairs. This is where I wanted you. Go back onto the stairs. We can deal with this. Oh, fuck! Why? Why is the AI like this? Yes. I really thought he was going to spend all that time being chill around the corner and then jump in at the last second. Okay, now we're good. Now that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it's not that bad. They're still 
dangerous, but as long as you're keeping your eyes open, it's not that bad. Keep reacting way too late. Like I'm already in hit stun or block stun or something. Meh. We're just doing that. Not looking for it enough. Come on. I just want my revenge at this point. Woo! What was that? Oh, perfect. Not a thing went wrong with that fight. I mean, to be fair, as long as I didn't die, nothing went wrong with that fight. No! Oh, well. That should have been backstab. But just like the last one, as long as we are keeping our eyes open, a 1v1 against them is not horrible. Yeah. Knock him out of the sky whenever you get the chance, and it's fine. Oop. They do hit real hard, though. Cannot underestimate that. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Now we can open this door up. And you can see the symbol. There's another sculptor's idol. Which is sorely needed after a fight that tough. It would be some shit if there was not one nearby. Uh, and also, we're going to finish out Mount Congo next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.